This is incredibly difficult to build. An input that grows in size based on the amount of content in it requires a ton of JavaScript and math, and you're looking at hundreds of lines of code just to make this single input. That is until the brand new CSS field sizing property came out, which lets me do all of this complicated JavaScript in one single line of code. In this video, I'm gonna show you what that property is, all the different edge cases related to, and the really cool things that it can do. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And to demonstrate how this property works, I just have a couple inputs on our page because it works differently with different types of inputs. We have a standard text input and that's gonna kind of take the place of like email and all the other standard text style inputs. Then we have a select box and finally we have a text area. And right now the only CSS styles that I have being applied to this entire project is just some styles on the actual input group itself just to stack these vertically over top of each other. But the actual input select and text area have absolutely no CSS being applied to them at all. So now what I wanna do is I wanna add this brand new property to show you how it works by default. So we can select our input, our select and our text area. And all I'm gonna do is add that field sizing property. Now this field sizing property takes two values. Fixed is the default where it's a fixed size element. And then content is the new property that's being added to this. And that essentially allows it to scale to the size of the content inside of it. Now when I save, you'll notice something kind of interesting happens. Our bio down here shrinks down to essentially one pixel wide. It shrinks down to the exact same size as our cursor. And that's the default behavior. If you don't have any width, a minimum or maximum set on an element, it's just going to shrink down to the smallest possible size for the element. And if we have a placeholder, you can see it shrinks down to the size of that placeholder. But as soon as I put some text inside of here, it's now just going to be exactly the same size as the text that I have inside of here. And then of course, when I have no text, it'll be that placeholder size. And then our select box here changed slightly. You may not have noticed it, but now no matter what element I select, it's actually gonna change the size of my select box to fit the size of that element. While when I had this property the way it was before, my select box is always the size of my largest element inside of it. So it's always gonna be the same width as this moderator. But when I say that the field sizing should be content, it's now gonna be based on whatever the size of the currently selected element is instead of the largest one. Now, obviously this isn't super useful unless we actually give it some minimum and maximum sizes. So generally what you're gonna to wanna to do if you want a normal input that expands in width, you're gonna to wanna to give it a minimum width. So we'll come in here with our input element and we'll say that we're gonna have a minimum width, and let's just say we want our minimum width to be 100 pixels. Now, no matter what, my element is always going to be at least 100 pixels wide. And as I type inside of it, as it gets larger than 100 pixels, you can see the width of this container just grows and grows and grows, and it's actually gonna keep growing off the edge of my page. I generally don't want that, so a maximum width of 100% is probably something that you want so it stays within the bounds of its parent container. Now it'll always be at least 100 pixels wide, and as I fill more content inside of it, it's going to grow until eventually it's too large to fit in its container, and then it'll actually become scrollable like a normal input would be. Now personally, I find that this field sizing content is only somewhat useful on standard inputs because generally you don't need scaling sized inputs, they're just going to be 100% width all the time. And again, they're not super useful on select elements because I don't generally like the size of my select element changing based on the content inside of it. I just want it to be one size all the time. Where this really comes in effect is the text area. That's where I find this the most useful. So let's come in here with a text area and see how this actually works because it not only grows horizontally, but it'll also grow vertically as well. So let's come in here, we'll say our minimum width is 100 pixels and let's set our maximum width to just be 300 pixels so we can see this without me having to type in so much text. So by default, we just have one row of 100 pixel wide text. And if we grow this past 300 pixels, you can see it's gonna wrap on the next line. I can hit enter a few times and again, it's gonna wrap onto the next line and it's just gonna constantly be wrapping and filling however much space I need. You can see here, my text area is just as large as it needs to be to fit my content. And as soon as I delete it now, you can see it shrinks down. Generally, when I'm using a text area, what I do is I just hard code the width to be something like 100%. And now I just have a text area that grows in height based on how much content I have inside of it. And a lot of times I may come in here with like a height of three REM. And actually I wanna make sure that's a minimum height so that I can grow beyond that. And now it's going to look like a general text area, but you can see it actually is able to grow beyond that based on the amount of content inside of it. Now this already covers a lot of the content that you need to know about the field sizing property. But there's a few extra things you should probably know about it, specifically related to some things with validation. So let's say we have an input here and let's say I specify a max length of 10. That means I can have at most 10 characters inside of here. 
Well, this is actually going to use that property for field sizing, and it's gonna make sure it stops growing as soon as I get to that maximum length. So let's come in here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And as soon as I try to type anything else, you notice my box is just going to stop at that exact size. No matter what other content I try to type, nothing else is gonna get put inside of there. And if I take a bunch of content that's much longer than 10 characters, and I paste it inside of here, you see it's only keeping those first 10 characters. And again, a lot of that is to do with that max length property. But again, our size is never gonna be larger than this particular max length, because I can't put any additional content inside of here. Another really important thing to note is how this actually works with browser support, because right now it's only supported in Chromium based browsers. That means Chrome, Edge, and so on. It's not supported in Firefox or Safari, which is a bit of a bummer, but the nice thing about this is in many cases, this is considered a progressive enhancement. Imagine that you had a form just like this, where you had a bio field that people could type some information inside of. And normally, if you didn't have your field sizing, you know, you would just have this minimum height of three REM. Maybe you'd make it a little bit larger, we'll say five REM. And you can see we can type about five lines of text inside of here before it has to create a scroll bar. This is generally fine for most users. But if they're using a Chromium based browser and they have this field sizing property able to be used, now this actual box can fill in whatever size they need based on the content they type inside of it. So it's a really great progressive enhancement where you can throw it into your site, even if the person's browser doesn't support it, it just pretends that this doesn't exist and you get a normal text area that scrolls. While if it does exist, you can see you get this nice growing text area. So this is a really great way to add this progressive enhancement to a lot of different sites. And you don't have to write tons of JavaScript to do this because in the past, this would take hundreds of lines of JavaScript to do right. And now it's just one single line of CSS. Now, if you want to stay up to date with all the latest and greatest CSS features, I highly recommend checking out my CSS Simplified course. It covers everything you need to know about CSS from an absolute beginner all the way up to advanced and intermediate concepts, even bleeding edge brand new CSS concepts. I'm going to link that course down in the description for you. Again, I highly recommend you check it out if you want to learn and master CSS. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.